All right. <clears throat> so I'm sure you guys are excited to know what you might not know. Um, and actually more of this that we'll talk about is really about application and use. And it's simply because we want to share maybe what's actually tested in mm -hmm. clinical testing versus application. And if you guys hadn't noticed, we've gotten a UV reveal um, to kind of showcase that and hopefully sh um, explain why, you know, application is the way it is. Um, but before we get into our learnings, we should talk about the UV reveal device itself. Yes. Um, the main thing being that it actually doesn't show what you may think is the entire broad spectrum protection and actually only shows UVA. So think about it for a second. That means that the SPF UVB is not covered in the video and pictures that you see that we share. Right. Um, and because of that, you're actually only seeing a very small window or it's a very small picture of what's happening. Yeah, and this is the limitations of these mm -hmm. home devices. We mm -hmm. actually did get a question from someone um, in our Instagram inbox asking if she can use the UV reveal for her clinical setting. And we really advise against it because yep. the reality is these home use LEDs, they're limited on their wavelength. UV reveals um, LED source wavelength is at 365 nanometers, yeah. which is right in the middle of the UV8 range. Yep. So um, when we show these videos, our, our goal is to really just to highlight some of the, you know, lifestyle scenarios you might, uh, it might happen. So mm -hmm. like the sweat test or mm -hmm. layering and stuff that we'll get into uh, later on this meet. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not really going out there. Like you shouldn't look at our data and freak out and say, oh my God, all the sunscreens out there suck, nothing works. Yep. It's just kind of a snapshot. Yep. Um, and the other thing too, um, someone had brought up a concern saying that, us ta sharing these videos makes it seem like we are questioning these formulas SPF protection mm -hmm. and if you're getting proper protection. Um, and just like Laura said, that should never be the takeaway. It should be more about how you think of the sunscreen film in mm -hmm. terms of application and how it might wear over time. Yes. And um, one of the first initial uh, test that we did, we're getting right into the topic now, is on sweat. And you'll see that for our different skin types, they're actually quite different, right? And, um, you know, sweat resistance is actually something that you can no longer claim in the U.S. So what ends up happening is people believe that by using water resistance, um, basing it off of water resistant claims, that's how you purchase sunscreen for sweat. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to show you was that that's actually not the greatest claim to mm -hmm. fall. It doesn't necessarily mean that it holds up. Yeah. And sadly, I think that introduces a lot of doubt and we don't necessarily want you to question it. I think it's just a matter of, you know, it's important to keep to time frame of, you know, water resistance. You do what you can. You know, and I, Gloria, you can weigh in on your berries experience. <laughs> First of all, more sweat. Yeah, we should talk test. about yeah. that test. Yeah. We went to berries. <laughs> <laughs> and I, therapy for those of you who've never been to berries, it's like kind of a boot camp thing where you spend like 10 minutes on treadmill, 10 minutes doing weights, and you hop on and off and you sweat like like crazy and I had felt like it was a religious experience because every time I go to Barry's towards the end I feel like I see some sort of light in some sort of tunnel it's it's uh yeah it's, it's a it's, it's a workout that kicks your ass for like 50 minutes which is I, awesome I always tell Gloria it's like what is it when the trainers they're like the most attractive trainers uh female male and they usually are the ones that are have the hardest classes and i end up walking away like i freaking hate your beautiful face like that anger sculpted ass. <laughs> <laughs> but i'm gonna try to work to get that sculpted yes. ass. Yeah, yeah so i i sweat a lot during exercise in yeah. general and it buries i pour buckets yeah. and and really my takeaway from that is just it's a reminder to just reapply. Um, yeah. We ourselves live in Southern California, so we hike a lot. And sometimes when you're in the middle of an activity, you do forget that, mm -hmm. you know, and this type of situations, uh, the two hour reapp uh, reapplication mark might just not be good enough. So that test is kind of meant to demonstrate that, hey, you know, if you are being active, that's something you should keep in mind. 
that's it <laughs> and the other thing too is like you know i want to say especially my like sweat prone areas which was like my nose and like my gloria calls it the jafar zone area <laughs> um that that's when you can see the sunscreen film start to fade and also you need to think about things like rubbing your forehead wiping the sweat off your brow all of that does have an effect and if you can think back to when we had our sunscreen review we actually talked about an in vitro an in vitro method where they looked at sweat water droplets mm-hmm. on film and you can see the distortion so i just want to remind you that sweat salt water water from underneath the film is much different than you know you're swimming and water is outside the film so yeah. that's something that you wanted to bring light to and just a matter of um reapplication Le- uh, more is more here yeah.